Hello everybody, Dr. Rawls here. Want to let you know about a new blog I've written on COVID long haulers, the chronic form of COVID. Now I've been following COVID since the very beginning, uh, back in last December when it was first coming out of China, and wasn't surprised after about three to six months we started hearing reports of people who got sick but then just never got well, developed chronic symptoms that stayed with them. Fatigue, brain fog, muscle aches, and it starts to sound a lot like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, maybe even chronic Lyme. So waiting for all the research to accumulate, now we have quite a bit of information in, in the science about COVID and um, about possibly some solutions for this chronic COVID form of COVID that we're calling long COVID or chronic long haulers. But it also helps us just understand pathogenic microbes in general, viruses, bacteria, a lot of things that are associated with both acute, but also very importantly, chronic illness. So this virus that we're talking about is a form of coronavirus. Uh, there are four coronaviruses that circulate in human populations, but um, it's, uh, it's unique because it's skipped over from animal populations. So a lot of people don't have immunity. Now, whether you get sick or not depends on how much immunity you have to other coronaviruses that might help you out. Some people just don't have enough. But when we look at these viruses and bacteria and all the other things that are out there, you have to ask, well, what's the motive of the microbe? What does the microbe want to get from us? And what it wants is to get inside our body. And we have barriers on the outside, skin in the digestive tract where most of our microbes are. You've got the intestinal lining that keeps them contained. In the lungs, you've got a membrane. So we don't want them inside of our body, but that's where they want to go because our cells offer wonderful nutrients and resources. So all the microbes that we're talking about that cause these kind of infections, these chronic infections, are intracellular. They live inside our cells, which is that's where the food is. So that's where the protection is. So if they can get inside our cells, they can basically cannibalize the carbohydrates, fats, minerals, proteins, uh, vitamins inside the cell and use that as a food source and use the cell up and then break the cell apart and move on to other cells. Of course, the immune system doesn't want that to happen, so that creates conflict. But what we think of as an infection is the microbe trying to break down the barriers to get in the body. So we think of COVID or the coronavirus that causes COVID as a respiratory infection like influenza and many others because that's the entry point into the body. So if it can break through that entry point and get through, through the, the body, then it can get to the cells inside our body, which is really what it wants. So it's going to try any mechanism that it can get to do that. Now, all microbes are trying to do that. You know, when we look at chronic Lyme disease, the tick-borne microbes, what they're trying to do is bypass that battle that occurs in the lungs or other entry points and just get a shortcut through a tick bite that goes through the skin, through that barrier, and right into the bloodstream. So a lot of times, we don't even know that, that, that those microbes have entered with a tick bite or a mosquito bite or something like that because they get direct entry. We know about COVID a lot more because there's a battle going on in our lungs with that thing trying to break down barriers. But interesting, what I learned was that it's not necessarily, uh, that's not necessarily the only way that upfront break down the door approach isn't the only thing that, that it uses. So it, one thing that's documented in the science is that this microbe can travel down the olfactory nerve, the nerve that is con conducting our uh, taste and smell impulses into the brain. So it travels down that nerve tract to get into brain because brain, wow, there's a lot of great nutrients there and all the cells there. So that's why people lose that sense of smell and taste right up front. 
but we think it's doing a lot more. And there is where it has in common with Lyme disease microbes, all of the co-infections, and virtually any others that are trying to get, it to get in the body. So when it enters the body, um, the, the, the immune system responds by sending out white blood cells that gobble up the microbes to get rid of them. But we're finding that the microbes have really interesting ways of staying alive inside that white blood cell. So the white blood cell becomes a transport vehicle. And it basically transports the microbes throughout the body, across the blood-brain barrier, into the brain, into the heart, into our muscles, throughout our body. And that's why we have all these systemic symptoms. At least that's part of the reason. So some people are thinking it's mainly the inflammatory response um, that the immune system, all those chemical messengers called cytokines that are drummed up, and that's what causes systemic inflammation. And that's true to a certain extent, but autopsy reports are showing that, that people who have died of COVID, they're finding it in the heart and in the liver and in the kidneys and throughout the body. So that means that this microbe is traveling and is actually getting into tissues. Now, it's not a, a, uh, a heavy force invasion like coming in in the lungs. It's basically the microbe is peppered throughout the body. So the symptoms are just very diffuse. It's really the immune system reaction trying to get rid of the microbe um, that we have symptoms. So it's just this low-grade thing going on. And but once the you know think of that once this microbe is completely peppered into your tissues, all through your tissues, then it isn't going to uh, that then it doesn't it, it, the, the immune system can't have that all out upfront battle with the heavy artillery and the main troops. It's got to do it selectively. So we call in different sets of white blood cells of the adaptive immune system that are selective, that produce antibodies to the cells that have been infected with microbes and the microbes. So it's more of a targeted thing to try to weed them out in our tissues. It takes a long time to do that because if you, the more you intensify it, the more you damage normal cells. And when you target cells that have been infected by microbes, you're bound to target some cells that are normal too. So if you ramp that up too much, wow, you can do some real damage. It can actually kill you. So the immune system tones it down and recognizes that this is a long haul. It's a longer confrontation that's going to take time. But I've learned a lot. Uh, it's interesting and not surprising that when we look at COVID, they're co-infections. There were one study that showed that 20% of people, when they tested for them, had a range of different other bacteria or viruses that were possible co-infections that were, they were getting at the time of the respiratory infection. That may explain why some people get sicker. Um, there are different genes and different strains of the microbes, so there are a lot of factors that go in to that determination of whether somebody gets sick and how long it takes them to get well. But it's not surprising that some people are having a pretty long convalescence. What kind of factors are involved? Well, of course, the health of your immune system and the health of your cells. If you're eating bad food, you're stressed out, you're not getting exercise, and your cells are weak, Weak cells are vulnerable to invasion by microbes. So it's really important to keep, your, keep yourself healthy. And that's why we're seeing that people with poor health and other health conditions are more vulnerable. People that are older, their immune systems, their cells are aged out. They're more vulnerable. So we have to protect those people. But when I started looking for uh, solutions to this, it was... Uh, it was nice to see that there'd been a lot of research. Um, in fact, when you look at the total research on COVID and natural therapies, herbs, and other kinds of things for COVID, um, we've produced more intensive science and scientific investigations in the past year on COVID than we have on 30 years in chronic Lyme disease. So it's really nice to see. So it's going to help open up the door to understanding other things too. And when I look for the herbs, now you're not going to find that study that everybody wants of here's this, this selection of herbs and we use this in 30 people who have Lyme, uh, who have chronic COVID and we uh, uh, compared that to controls, and here's the results. 
but there's a lot of information about factors in the herbs. So when you look at plants, um, the all plants have antiviral properties because plant viruses are ubiquitous in nature. So all plants, every single plant has antiviral properties. So they're producing a spectrum of things, not one. And a lot of them are actually like some of the drugs, but it's hitting viruses from a lot of different directions. So they've looked at respiratory viruses and how they have responded to various different herbs, the different components of the herbs and how they're affecting it. So we actually know a lot about how these things affect respiratory viruses and some about how they affect COVID. Um, it's like one of the things in, in the coronavirus that causes COVID that uh, there is a special protein called a spike protein that is important for it entering into the cells and several other things. And we're finding that some plants have things that inhibit those processes that keep the, the, the virus from entering the cell. They pro, pro inhibit viral replication. They, they hit the, micro, the, the virus from a lot of different directions. But again, if it's inside the cell, we're not going to get to it as much. Our opportunity is protecting new cells, and that's why it takes a long time to wear this thing down. But you will get quicker, well, more quickly if you are taking good care of your cells, good nutrition, good health habits. Um, and it does look like the herbs could really be helpful in that support of keeping your cells healthy, protecting your cells, which could translate into a faster recovery. So the blog is worth reading. It's got lots of information. There's a lot of ties to other things. Um, and I've documented everything that's in the blog by scientific studies. So I can tell you it is valid. I've spent weeks and weeks of research um, combing through the scientific literature just to make sure what I was saying was correct. So please take the time to read it. And um, if you like it, uh, also share it with other people. I think this is valuable information that a lot of people are going to want to know about. Um, so thanks for your time and uh, take care.